YouTube! What the Attila crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back on Total War Attila. And, uh, what the Attila crap's going on? That didn't even make any sense. Oh well. <laughs> what the Dark Age? I, yeah. Gonna forget it. So, yesterday, you all got to see a couple of new campaign videos. Sorry, I'm starting a timer so I know how long my videos are. I really need to get something, like, mounted for this. You know, I could actually probably run a timer on my second monitor now at this point. In fact, that would probably be a good idea. I'll look for that. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking to give you all flavor for a couple more different campaign options. Now, some of you, I think, seem to get what I'm doing here, and some of you may still be a little confused, so I'm going to explain it again briefly, what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I've read through a lot of comments, and I'm reading through the feedback that you all are giving me on the first two videos, and some of you think that I'm starting to wear... I'm going to make like five or six campaigns at a time, all at the same time. Uh, or that I quit the old ones, or that I'm going to definitely continue these right now. I, I think that maybe some of you misunderstood my intentions. What I'm doing is rather than just holding like a blind faction vote or campaign vote where I say, okay, which one's it going to be? This one, this one, this one, or this one? What I'm doing is actually showing you a few different ones. And then, when you like the video, or you go to the comment where I give you the opportunity to dissent from that, and leave your feedback, it's helping me to understand what you want. It's basically me gathering feedback. And I've had a lot of different questions like, hey, how come you're not using straw poll? How come you're not doing it? Something like that. So, again, not using straw poll because I want you all to, to see. See, watch, tell me what you think. Um, and then give me feedback. Uh, I'm not opposed to the idea of using like a, a poll site or something. I just feel like that the type of feedback I want, I need it to be numeric in some sense. You know, when people drop likes uh, or thumbs up on the comment that I leave, however I ask you to do it, that helps me understand numerically uh, the engagement. But then the qualitative piece of it is nice on YouTube where I can see your comments and, and read through it. Um, and again, I'm taking all the feedback that you all give me. Again, I can't make everybody happy, but this is an opportunity for me to align and to kind of get consensus on uh, what makes you happy. And then I, <laughs> one person, actually several people made comments to the order of, Air, just do what you like, because when you're happy, I enjoy the videos. Hey, I, I get it, and that's extremely polite of you to say. I enjoy making videos for you. That's uh, like, I mean, pretty much any of them. And when, and again, I'm happiest making the videos when I know that you all are having a, getting a kick out of it, like when it's exciting for you, like, sweet, Air just uploaded this video, now I get to watch it. I'm kind of the same way. There's stuff on YouTube that I get excited when, when people upload certain types of videos, and I'm like, yes, I get to go watch this. Um, so that's what I want to provide to you. I don't want it to be like, well, you know, another day, another another this, another that. I, I want it to be exciting if possible. Maybe it's not, and, and you know, to that extent, there's only so much I can do. Anyway, let me re-explain the process here. Today, I'm going to give you a flavor of East Rome, and I'm also going to give you a flavor of a Medieval 2 campaign. And uh, I'll speak more about the Medieval 2 campaign on that video. Uh, let me re-explain why East Rome, why not West Rome. I'm waiting for all the patches and everything else to be done. Um, and I want West Rome to be my hardest, most challenging campaign. I also want them to open the Steam Workshop. I know that there's already mods in the Total War Center. That's awesome. The Total War Center is great. Uh, but I'm just waiting for them to open it on the, uh, on the workshop so that I can show you all the mods I'm using in case you want to use it on your own. And uh, it makes it simpler for me to do as well. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. And uh, anyway, I'll run the West Roman one then, and we'll get an awesome, awesome campaign set up for you. In the meantime, I want you to get a flavor of some Roman campaign, and that's why I'm throwing this option in here. So at the end of today, you will have four different campaign videos I showed you that are new. And I will be studying that feedback um, and kind of deciding where to go next. I can do all of them at the same time if you want, you know, alternating through them so that you have variety. I can focus in on some of them if you want. Right now, I've got a ton of interest in the Ebdani campaign that I put up, and I've also got a ton of interest in the, um, like a ton of interest in the Fall of Samurai campaign. So even if those don't come in first place, it, it appears that there's enough interest that I need to do it regardless at some point. So if you want to leave some comments on this video letting me know, um, do, again, just kind of help me understand. Do you mind if I'm alternating like on days between campaigns? Would you rather see a certain one come out at every day, every day? Uh, you know, like just hammering through it? Uh, just tell me what you think. 
Um, the other option that I could throw in there, it's, it's um, a possibility at least, is maybe if I don't put an episode of one of these up every day, um, like so say for instance, since I'm alternating through several, maybe I could try and do a little bit longer video to fit a little more in. Um, maybe fewer videos, but more for you to watch. Um, when I say fewer, uh, you know, like rather than doing a 30 minute episode every day, you know, what if I had an hour long episode every, every couple days or something like that? So I mean, just, again, I don't know what all I can provide you. I'm just trying to throw some ideas out there and see what you all are interested in. So appreciate your feedback. It's a lot of talking. So again, if you like this idea, if you want to see me continue the East Romans, please like the video. I'm not trying to have you like whore out likes for me here. It's just a way for me to quantify this. Liking the video makes sense, right? If you like this, just like this video. I'm not going to be asking you for likes on every video because I know some people don't like that, and that's fine. Um, not that I'm saying I have something against YouTubers who ask for likes or subscriptions either. It doesn't bother me. If I want to, I will. If I don't, I won't. It's not going to bother me if they ask me. But again, I do that just because, I don't know, it's just not me. I guess I don't go around asking for it. But I'll leave a comment that says, if you would prefer to see me do something different, thumbs up this comment and leave your ideas on what you would want different. So, that's what we're going to do. East Rome, let's jump into it. I'm going to put it on very hard. Uh, economic powerhouse is our faction trait, so we get plus 5 interest on the treasury at the end of the turn, and we get plus 50% to trade tears, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, let's kick it off. Pretty darn excited to play as the East Romans. The Sassanids and the East Romans are probably my favorite factions in the game. I don't really know why, they just are. Um, but there's a, a lot of fun factions in the game, to be honest. I, I really like the Burgundians. I like the Franks. I like um, a lot of factions. The air was filled with smoke and blood. The Roman Empire was divided from the shores of the Danube to the sands of Egypt and Arabia. The Eastern Empire sprawled. The West ripped itself to pieces, abandoning Rome, while the righteous looked east. The sun rose on Constantinople, God's new city, where the spirit of Rome prospered. Her people grew rich and powerful, paying neighboring kings to do their will. given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Romans of the Eastern Empire, those architects of a new age and forgers of a new empire to light the world, they made ready for war. I like that intro, it was good. The late Emperor Theodosius decreed that Rome be divided, entrusting you with the bountiful East. Now the Empire is in danger. The Hunnic hordes are approaching from the Northeast, driving even the hardiest of barbarian tribes to flee before them. The Visigoths and their ilk migrate across your lands. They cannot be allowed to harm your people. Be mindful, too, of your southeastern territories. The Sassanid Empire is strong and will challenge you for dominion of the East. The West is guarded by the Western Romans, but they, too, are overstretched and under threat of barbarian invasion. It may be prudent to unite Rome under your banner and restore the Empire to her former glory. That's definitely not a bad plan. 
Now, just out of curiosity, that once that the West Romans became the puppet state of Garamantia, <laughs> makes me want to try this real quick. On behalf of the Emperor, welcome. Speak, friend, and honor us <laughs> okay. with wit. I think we had to, uh, I think we had to see. Uh, so we're already trading with them. We got the Sassanid Empire, who doesn't like us, but I'm curious, could we you maybe offer them a trade agreement? With a dull tongue. My torturer has a collection of dullards parts. This is not exporting die. So... They're not real interested in the trade agreement. That's okay. Just curious. Let's see what else we have. Maurians, way off over here. Let's just see what. Am I always to be disturbed by? Um. See if there's anybody else we can trade with. What else we got here? <laughs> Garamantians. Do These guys are pretty untrustworthy. Let's see, the Franks. <laughs> Welcome. Speak. Come on. No, doesn't look like anybody's interested in the moment at trading with us. That's okay. Not a big deal. Just uh, curious to see if we could get any you easy money. I don't feel like offering them anything in particular. Um, I am gonna change the battle difficulty to balance it. So I'm gonna put it on um, normal, and if it's too easy, we can change it later. I do have the campaign difficulty on very hard. Um, so, let's see, there we go, um, okay, let's kind of take a look at things, see how we're doing, monetarily speaking, we're, we're turning, we're turning a decent amount of money on each turn, let's kind of take a look at the overview and get acquainted with our provinces, uh, someone was saying that fertility doesn't really matter because it just gets wrecked in the late game, that's true, but in the early game you can take advantage of it with the wheat fields and then, uh, just trade them over eventually, so, uh, Egypt, Bithynia, Thracia, and uh, the Dardania is, is all pretty fertile, as is. Uh, wow, this one's very fertile. I thought that it was pretty dry um, in, in modern day Crete. Is it is it fertile? Just a little dry? I mean, I'm curious. Cyprus also is really high. I have no idea. Same thing with Rhodes. So this whole province is, is quite fertile. And then uh, we share a border here with the Sassanids, and, and these two um, areas are quite fertile as well. So I, I would probably focus some food there for now, um, and then we can switch over. Let's take a look at our armies. We're going to need to get at least one strong army in this vicinity, and probably one strong army in this vicinity. So I may keep some of the smaller ones around just for uh, keeping away smaller factions, but we, we definitely need to focus on that, I think. Let's take a look at public order. So, we don't have any low public order, but we don't necessarily have particularly good public order. And then let's take a look at religion. So, it looks like pretty, pretty well majority Greek Christian, except for down here in Egypt. We have Greek Christian, Aryan Christian, Greco-Roman paganism as well. And then out here we've got uh, Peritoneum, we've got, let's see, Greco-Roman Paganism is highest, and then you got Greek Christian and others. So, going to be some, some mix of religion going on here, but it shouldn't be too bad for us to handle. Interesting. Okay. All right, uh, let's pop out of this map here and uh, kind of start to focus on some of our armies and then we'll worry about building. Well, actually, let's take a look at our settlement scroll first. Um, Bithynia is a fertile province, but is actually importing food. So we'd probably want to turn that around. Let's just take a look at public order here too. So I think public order in these places are happy, but headed downward. That's correct. So happy, but headed downward, happy, headed upward. So that's good to know. So yeah, let's just take a look at every region and, and just kind of see if there's any easy go-gets that we can do. The, uh, the little church thing here is probably good. We need to have a little public order and spread the the Greek Christianity. That'll definitely help. 
Um, it's our sanitation here that's that's not all that great, so it would make sense to build a sanitation structure here. Yeah, we don't have a ton of food either, so we need to keep an eye on that. We'll build this uh, waterworks. So there we go. Spend a little money on that. Uh, let's take a look at some other major provinces. So we got Asia here, which is the same thing. A little bit of a sanitation issue. Jetty Forum. So again, let's uh, go ahead and drop a waterworks in here. That'll probably help turn around a little bit of the public order. Bithynia, it's the same issue again here. So let's get some of this squalor handled to start off with. Yeah, it adds two sanitation to all regions in the province. This will actually take up quite a bit of my money, and in fact, I, I think I'm going to wait and um, spend a little money on this army here, I think, which is actually that one's retraining. I've got this army here in Constantinople that's healthy. We're going to need to get some, like I said, at least one strong... Sorry, I bumped my microphone again, so... We got Limitani border guards and cohorts. We're probably going to need some upgraded military troops pretty quickly. Um, we could qu quickly get to Protectores Domestici here, which would be very nice. Let's just kind of see what we unlock here as we go along. So once we get to Protectores, it takes us quite a while. And then up here we can get Legio Comita Tenses, Lanciaria Senores. Eastern Armored Legio, all that stuff would be very handy. We're going to need this stuff too, though, here to uh, better our food stand. So let's go ahead and try and get uh, the Protectores Domestici open, and then we will open up the cattle pens, wheat farm, stables, all that kind of stuff. So I think that'll be my, my ticket here. Let's see what we can build right now in the different provinces from a recruitment stand. Uh, these cohorts are not particularly good, but they do have a javelin. <laughs> and they'll get the job done for now. And we can't actually even train any scout equites there. All we can train is border guards there. Let's take this army because Constantinople is going to be somewhat strong enough to protect itself uh, in the absence of an army. And let's get a let's get some uh, some more cohorts trained. Um, and then try and get out and put an end to these Visigothic armies as quickly as possible. Uh, they are probably going to start hurting me very quickly here. Um, that's going to take some money to do. We've got two armies here. And I don't know if the two of them are necessary. I'd kind of almost like to just combine them into one stronger one. But we're probably getting some benefits from having the garrison. And it's kind of the same situation here. Let's just uh, go ahead and end the turn and kind of let's kind of see what happens. We can assign a provincial governor as well. Egypt had public order heading down, so maybe that'd be a good place to put a provincial governor. Let's see, so... Looks like all my generals are from other patricians. So I might just go ahead and put my... Uh, I wonder how many governors we can assign right now. Is it Thracia? I'm going to put him in Thracia because that's the uh, where the capital's at. May not be where I need one the most, but... Uh, can I not put him in Thracia? I don't know. Uh, yeah, he is in Thracia. I'm like, uh, what just happened? And uh, let's put this guy in Egypt. Okay. So, and we can probably assign more provincial governors, but I'm not going to at the moment... Let's see what we can do here. So we can boost our Greek influence, which we won't need in this province. Get an extra tax rate, food production and growth going up. Um, could be handy because we still have to develop uh, several building slots here. So that could potentially be handy. And plus four public order bonus due to the presence of Greek Christianity. The public order here seems okay-ish as it is. So let's go with the food production and growth. And then... In Egypt, I think that we probably also want the food production and growth here. Um, there's not as much Greek Christian influence. Well, I don't know, though. The Let's try it and just see how much of a boost we get. And if we want, we can switch it back. 
So there we go. Let's end the turn. Uh, I'm not going to assign uh, a governor uh, at the moment. I don't want to give a ton of influence to the other factions for free here. So the West Romans are being attacked by the Abdanians and guess all. The real question is, should we just abandon the West Romans? It breaks our alliance with them. What are they going to do? Come to war with us? Do I want to get myself in wars with all these other people? That's a good question. Because I'm going to want to take their land anyway, so it's not like I probably really need to be wildly aligned with them, but they could prove helpful. Let's, uh, let's stay with our allies for the moment. Visigoths, this is expected. They're going to do some raiding until I can get over there and stop them. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, there's no way I can stop those Gothic Warband. Not a prayer. Uh, our towers might damage them. And I could definitely fight some of these battles to wear them down. And probably should, even though I don't really want to. Because this will kind of help wear down uh, the Visigoth armies and make them easier to stop. Not exactly my favorite thing to have to do, but I think in these Roman campaigns it's probably necessary right at the beginning, so even if you're not going to win, to just try and cause some serious damage to the enemies so that it's going to slow them down and make it easier for your army to catch up to them and put them down. Those Gothic Warband are a serious threat to anything that I can field at the moment. Otherwise, their army here is really nothing special. But yeah, them having to come through these towers will create some issues for them. I don't really think I want to put my barricade there because it's going to restrict my own movement. I guess I'll just put a barricade there. I could put one down. We are not going to be able to defend well against what's going to happen here. Let's see. The AI has their cavalry over here. They would probably end up leaving those archers behind. I'm going to put my cab over here and just see if I can get in behind and kill a bunch of archers. Let's go ahead and start the battle. AI is probably going to come at me from as many directions as they can, which is going to be problematic. But uh, like I said, my towers will probably do some pretty fair damage to all these troops. Are they just going to send their cavalry after me? Let's go hide our cavalry, see if we can get them to ignore it. Yeah, they got two cav units. <laughs> Honestly, they could probably just bum rush me with the mounted warband and it'll kill all my units. I wonder if I can kind of try to defend myself here. I don't think I'll be able to because I've got to depend on exploratories for one of my flanks. <laughs> yeah, there's no real way for me to... Uh, Yeah, because I have to defend. Well, you know what I could do? Yeah, that's going to be my best position. Let's uh, let's put our, I think our Kamita Tensei Spears are actually going to be our best bet here. And then let's put our Cohorts here, and then we'll put our Exploratores here in that little hedge maze. One of our towers is already down. Um, they may have Raider units, but these pikemen are going to be taking some decent damage here. They'll definitely get a hold of the tower, but it, it'll take its toll. You can see we've actually killed quite a few of these. So this is why it's worth it to fight these. The computer gets away with pretty low losses otherwise. Uh, the town's on fire, though. That's going to affect the morale of my men. Depending on if it keeps getting burned up. I'm going to put my guys into a defensive formation in both spots here to help protect them from missiles. My exploratories are just screwed. <laughs> Not a whole lot of other way to put it. Oh, those gothic warband. That is going to be a serious problem. Okay, these guys have a mercenary onager, and they have more cavalry. They must have reinforcing troops coming on is what it is, because they've got a lot more cavalry. Yeah, we're never going to survive this. Yeah, here's where they're going to start firing. And if they're firing at my exploratories, then they're dead. 
Nope, they're firing at my guys who are in a in a defensive formation, so that, that's actually a waste of their ammo. Like I said, let's uh, let's just wait with our cavalry and see if we can get at one of their onagers or something like that. We're gonna have to do it relatively quick, but see over here how they've got cavalry just continuing to circle. We're never gonna be able to get at them like that. Okay, their cavalry is trying to break through my guys. Now they're firing at my, ex uh, my exploratorius, so that's bad. I'm gonna just go over here and see if I can help against the Gothic Warband. <laughs> my Limitani border guards, even in their defensive formation, are going to get absolutely mauled. So this fight's not gonna last a whole lot longer. Let's just see Lucky, if we can get Lucky, maybe... Ah, there's no way we can kill that Germanic general with the Scout Equite. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to get to their onagers over here. So let's just come in here with our Scout Equites, do what we can do. There's very little we can do. Like I said, this is just more of a process of making sure that some of their men died. Enemy troops are at the walls. Yeah, my guys have only gotten four kills here and one kill there. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be super effective against these types of units. And my, my cohorts, though, are going to be able to hold back this Germanic mounted warband. We might be able to get to their archers here. We'll see. I'm going to have to let my cavalry come up to this point and probably rest. Though my forces on the ground won't last forever. I'm surprised we're not wavering already. The only reason I'm not wavering is because I took up this defensive position. Um, AI is shooting its own men in the back, fortunately for me. Yeah, let's see what they got going on here. So they'll actually be killing a few of their own men here. I'm not really getting a whole lot of kills, but like I said, the archer shots into the into their own men ought to actually take a small toll. And it is. They're losing more men than what I've killed. Their general looks like he wants to commit to this fight, so I might actually be able to get in here and get those archers. Let's try it. And uh, if we can kill those archers, that'd be... Like I said, just whatever little bit we can get each time is going to be what we want. His pikemen are going to be almost as crappy as my cohorts. Yeah, their warband's going to come back. Could come after my scout equites. Their archers are going to run for it. But I'm going to catch them. I'd probably route them here. But their uh, Germanic mounted warband's headed this way. That's bad, even though it's been damaged pretty badly. Their general's also headed this way. I'd like to kill these archers and get out of here. They're already wavering, but now that the charge is over, we'll see. Let's kind of take a look up at the close-up uh, combat. My scout equite is here, going after their archers. We have routed them, so let's uh, let's get out of here for a minute. Yes, go ahead and turn around. Let's check out my cohorts. Uh, so here's my cohorts here defending against the, uh, the enemy pikemen. And then over here is my... Uh, uh, my general, which is, I think, a committed Tensei Spears, along with some Exploratories, also trying to fight off a uh, big wave of pikemen there. They will lose. Uh, I'm completely outnumbered. Their archers came back from routing, but I mean, we basically got rid of a unit of archers there. It was a handy result. They got a whole other unit of uh, mounted warband coming in. Let's just go ahead and charge their general real quick. We're going to get killed here, most likely. Not a whole lot of other units over here we're going to be able to really get. Let's go ahead and pull away from the general. We didn't really do any damage here. I'd kind of like to get away from that mounted warband and just go see if we can kill anything else. Gothic warband over there. If we could charge them, we'd actually get a few kills. My uh, men in the center here are going to be routing soon, uh, my general included. So, like I said, even in their uh, defensive formation, they're absolutely no match for the offensive power of all these Gothic warbands. Some of them just standing back here taunting, letting me know how decapitated my men are going to be going home tonight. Like, extremely decapitated is what they're trying to say here. I wonder if those pikemen could actually get braced in time. Yeah, they could. They just pulled out their spears. I can get around them, though. The question is whether my scout equities are just going to straight up route. 
Yeah, their pikemen are trying to catch me here. My scout equites need to just come on through, guys. Just go around them, please. Yeah, they can't really catch you. You should have just walked around that spear. All right, so my guys up here are dead. Like I said, that that's expected. And my scout equite is probably going to route from fear now at this point. Uh, let's let's get all spread out though, and uh, give this guff. Well, let's let my guys rest for a second actually. Get their stamina back. They may route, especially if my general dies. But they're gonna they're very tired, so we're gonna need to get their stamina back up at least a little bit here and these gothic warband are under fire for my towers anyway so again all of these kills um, are gonna be worth it because we've got to uh, we've got to uh, wear down the enemies here <laughs> these guys are just sitting here eating quite a lot of tower fire come on all right we're back to fresh so the Gothic Warband won't really be able to brace, and I'm going to hit them with a Frontal Cavalry Charge. They have Halted, which is going to be best for them. My guy's are already wavering, though, so I'm just going to let them do what damage they can do here, which will actually be pretty big. <laughs> but then the Gothic Warband will turn around and absolutely hack my men to the ground. But, I mean, we got quite a few kills there on that charge. So my Scout Equite is racking up 179 kills. 105 for my Cohort is not bad. So all in all, we, we caused the enemy 504 losses. This may seem like it was fruitless, but it is actually purposeful. Um, it's just basically the slow wearing down of these forces. Uh, they would now have to retrain those troops or go into their next battle weaker. Um, and 60 less Gothic Warband is definitely worth it. Um, so that's kind of what I expect we're going to have to do a couple of times. Um, and we'll just kind of work our way... Uh, through it and then we can get a decent army to guard those borders up there by the Danube and that ought to keep us in pretty good shape I'm gonna keep entering the war on the side of my allies here and we'll just kinda see how it turns out hopefully it doesn't turn off too terribly bad uh, we've maintained our income for now which is a good sign as well and then slowly as we build up buildings it should start to improve and uh, we can just start to make things better and then if we get a chance we can maybe hopefully get some puppet states rolling because they pay out nicely as well anyway this is a little taste of what to expect in the East East Roman campaign at the first here I think it's gonna be a little more challenging than say like the Sassanids where we had um, fewer enemies and way more puppet states we now have um, few puppet states and we're stretched pretty thin we do, I think, have the same capability economy-wise in the end, but we're going to have to really fight for it here at the beginning in order to get to that point um, of being able to defend ourselves. So that's that's what I see as kind of the fun challenge here being, um, and we'll just kind of have to work through that and get it all figured out. Tell me what you think. Again, if you like the video, then go thumbs up the video. Go like the video if, the, if you want to see more of these. If you would rather see something different, I will have a comment that says, if you'd like to see something different, thumbs this up. Uh, the comment, not the video, obviously, if uh, I'm not making you do that. Um, and just give me your feedback. Let me know what you think. Um, and then also, you can feel free to leave comments telling me, again, Air, uh, maybe, maybe it'd be cool if you just did one campaign every day until it was done. Maybe it would be cool if you did multiple campaigns so we get a lot of variety. Uh, Air, if you're going to do multiple campaigns, maybe a longer episode on them would be nicer so we get a little more done in each episode. Just give me your feedback. Tell me what you think. I, again, I don't know everything that's possible, but I'm going to be listening and kind of taking notes on what people are thinking, and we'll make some decisions based off of it. Make sure to check out the Medieval 2 campaign that I'm going to show you on the next video, and it'll be the same process there. Tell me what you think of that in, in kind of the same manner. Anyway, Air of Carthage, signing off for now.